Hey guys, welcome to uh, my tutorial. In this tutorial I want to demonstrate um, how to create a snap zone. So you have an object that you're carrying around and then you put it into a certain place and it snaps into place. Um, like you're seeing here, the triangle, obviously that's a little bit off center, that's my fault. Um, but I'm putting these places, these objects in place and when all three are snapped in place then the rocket takes off into the sky uh, which is an extra little feature of the game so going through the setup for this um, just as a quick note you can also do this through a library called VRTK virtual reality toolkit um, there's a version 3 and a version 4 and version 4 is wildly different from version 3 um, I found this just a little bit too over engineered for what I wanted to accomplish uh, it looks like the developers put a lot of time in this, so you should definitely check it out. But it was just a little too complex and um, convoluted for my own sort of purposes. So I would check this out, but uh, this is a quick way to do it without sort of building around the VRTK. So here's the, the project setup. You can see I've got a bench with three rocket parts on it. I've got a very crude looking rocket. Um, here's the three parts. And then you can see under the rocket I've got uh, the cone, just a cone piece and a cylinder piece. Um, one thing to note, I built both of these in Pro Builder. So they're going to come with this uh, this mesh collider by default. And you have to toggle that to be convex. Um, it comes by it comes not checked to begin with. If you have it unchecked, it just falls through the terrain. So if I press play, yep, you can just see the whole thing falls down. So you want to make sure that that is set to convex if you're using Pro Builder. Otherwise, this has no application to you whatsoever. Um, yeah, you can see here with convex, it, it stays fine. So uh, anyways, I've got the cone and the cylinder, and then there's three sort of areas here, which is where the rocket parts are supposed to snap into. Um, and each part is shaped in the same way as those zones. I've got the OVR player controller up here. Again, that's a prefab that comes from the Oculus integration. So it's Oculus, uh, VR, and then prefabs. And then it's underneath that prefab folder there, OVR player controller prefab. I've also added in the local avatar under the tracking space. So the local avatar is another prefab from the Oculus integration. And I've added these two grabber hands under the local avatar. Um, those have to be added you can just search, uh, I just search for avatar grabbable or avatar grabber and you'll find both of those right there so long as you have the oculus integration installed so uh, yeah the local avatar has to be within the tracking space and the grabbers have to be under the local avatar if they're in the sort of the main tracking space or you try to replace the left hand anchor or right hand anchor uh, it won't work for whatever reason haven't figured out why that is yet okay so that's kind of like the are seen there. One other change you'll want to make here is you'll want to go to edit project settings and then go to time and you'll want to uh, change the fixed time step which is basically your frame rate uh, from to 1 over 90 which is going to be this 0 0.0111 number. Uh, if it is not set to that your game's going to look really like laggy and glitchy uh, so you want to make sure that it's set to the correct time step. So we've got the cube, which is just a bench here for our rocket parts. It's got a rigid body, it's got a box collider. You've got the rocket, which we looked at already. Um, underneath the rocket, so what we're actually doing to create these snap zones here. Um, within the rocket we have obviously these three areas. Um, and that's comprised of kind of the part that you can see, and then a part that you can't see in the game. And so the part you can see are, are these yellow shapes here. And then the part you can't see is going to be a sphere collider. Um, and then the sphere collider has a snap to location script on it, which we'll look at in a little bit here. Uh, all I'm doing to create that is just creating a new 3D object, a sphere. And then I'm going in and removing the mesh renderer on the sphere. So just remove component on that mesh renderer and then you're left with a sphere collider um, and you also want to set this to is trigger if it's 
if that option is not checked, then it's going to um, repel other objects when it, it starts colliding with them. So uh, you want to make sure the is trigger is set, and that kind of just make, means that it's going to be a boundary for detection. So whenever something comes within this sphere, then we can program uh, behavior to happen, which is what we're doing. So you can see I've got I've got the um, the sort of center point of the sphere lined up exactly with the outer face of this yellow cylinder, um, and that's for uh, that's that center location or center transform position is what's actually being used in the script to set the new snapped position for our rocket parts over here. So we want it to be right on the sort of the face of those yellow rocket zones. Um, as far as the actual rocket parts go, uh, obviously they have a box collider. Uh, it is not set to is trigger. Um, it's got a rigid body. It's got an OVR grabbable script, and it's got this snap object script, which we'll look at here in a little bit. Um, so yeah, kind of just a regular grabbable object. It, note that it does have to have the OVR grabbable script, which is part of the Oculus integration, in order for them to be picked up. And then yeah, everything else is pretty standard. Um, one other thing to note about these yellow areas, they also have the option for is trigger checked. Um, if that option is not checked, what ends up happening is the yellow object, after you snap the rocket part into place, the yellow object collides with it and then starts like pushing the whole rocket away across the plane, which we don't want. It creates a really weird behavior. So you want to make sure those are set to is trigger as well if you're building this this exact thing or if you run into that type of bug in the, on your build. We've got our scripts. Let's really quickly review what's going to happen in the script process. So we're going to check to see if rocket part one of these rocket parts comes within the radius of one of these sphere colliders. If the rocket part comes within the sphere collider and the name matches the name, uh, the name of the rocket part matches the name designated in this, uh, this field here. And we are sure that the player has let go of the rocket part. So the player is no longer grabbing it with the controller. Then we want to set the transform and rotation variables of the rocket part. So the position, transform position and transform rotation. We want to set those variables to a new um, set of coordinates so that it appears the correct place. And then lastly, we want to set the rocket part to be a child of this rocket zone. And we want to set the rocket part rigid body to be is kinematic so that it doesn't just fall to the ground after updating the, uh, the transform position. So. Um, the reason we're doing all that, um, or the, the reason that we're adding it as a child is because if it, we added it, if we didn't add it as a child to these snap zone areas, um, they would just get left behind when the rocket launches. So we want to make sure that they're set as a child of these three areas. Okay, so we have two scripts that's doing that, um, and then we use a lot of public, uh, public game objects here to get to reference um, both the snap zone and the rocket parts. So you can see that these these are our public game objects here um, and we also have public game objects on the um, the snappable object. So these two scripts sort of interact with each other and work to make this whole effect. Um, we're going to start with snap to location. We have um, one, two, three, five different variables that sort of kick us off. Um, two of these variables are private, um, and then the rest of them are public, so that they can be referenced by um, other scripts, or so they can reference other objects. So the first thing we're doing is we're just checking to see um, if the object has been moved inside the sphere collider. So we have untrigger enter and untrigger exit, and it's checking to see you know, if the other, the object that enters the sphere collider, if the name matches 
the the name of the rocket part that we set, um, then it's going to change this inside snap zone variable either to true or to false. So we're checking to see, hey, has the player moved that uh, rocket part within the snap zone radius yet? Yes or no? Then we have this function snap object. So if grabbed equals false and grabbed is set down here to be equal to um, a boolean value from the OVR grabbable script. So if grabbed equals false and we are inside the snap zone, so if the player is no longer holding onto the object, then we want to set um, the rocket part <coughs> transform position and transform rotation to these new transform rotation and position values. And then we also want to set our public boolean value to true, which tells um, other scripts that, uh, hey, uh, we've snapped it into place. Now you can do something else on your end. Then in our update function, we're just running the snap object function here. Um, and remember, this runs once per frame. So we're also checking every frame to see um, what the OVR grabbable is grabbed boolean is. So this tells us every frame this vari variable gets updated with the information from the OVR grabbable script. So then if we look at, so this, remember this script goes on the snap zone here, which is the sphere collider. And then we have our snap object script, which goes on the rocket parts. And again, we have uh, five variables that we start out with. So we have two private variables, um, a public Boolean, and then two public game objects. And everything happens within the update function in this one. So again, we're, um, we're grabbing the Boolean value from the OVR grabbable component. Um, we're setting, we're actually grabbing the snapped Boolean value from our other script. So um, we're referencing the sphere collider. We're getting the script component from that sphere collider. And then we're grabbing the Boolean value snapped right here. Um, which is being set under the snap object function. We're grabbing that and setting it to object snapped. And then we check to see if object snapped equals true, then we're going to set the component of the rocket part, um, or we're going to set the, the rigid body component is kinematic. We're going to set the parent transform of the transform to um, our predetermined rocket.transform here. And then we're going to set our variable is snapped equal to true uh, for use in the rocket launch script. So the last um, if statement we have in this script is actually, it's kind of, it's not necessary for how it's working right now, but it is left over from when I thought, so the way that it works right now is once the object is snapped into place, it's permanent. Like you can't pick it back up and, you know, pull it out of that, that snapped area. The OVR grabber script from the Oculus integration also sets your rigid body component to is kinematic. So you do run into some weird, if you're setting a rigid body to is kinematic and you're also working with the OVR grabber script, uh, you might run into some weird bugs. And so this, I kind of just left this in to talk about that um, and say that, you know, I had to, I had to um, check these flags here um, if I wanted to set it back to is false. Um, because if I, if I was setting the is kinematic to false, but I was still grabbing the object, when I grabbed the object, it would set is kinematic to true. But then in the update loop, my script would set is kinematic to false. And so it meant that you couldn't actually pick up the object anymore. It was sort of weird and glitchy. So yeah, just an interesting thing to note there if you're working with the OVR grabbable or OVR grabber script. Um, okay, last but not least, Let's check. Um, so the last thing that I have here is the actual rocket launch itself. Um, uses this rocket launch script, which has an array of rocket parts. So it's a public game object array. And then I've got all three of my rocket parts listed in there. And what's happening is it checks to see if um, the component, the variable that we have set down here, this is snapped variable. If that's set to true on all three of these parts, then the rocket says, okay, I'm going to go ahead and launch. 
and to launch the rocket we add a constant force and we set the Y force to be 1500 and then that causes everything to take off so let's just look at that script real quick and then we'll be done so rocket launch so we have that public game object array we have two boolean values so um, we have a boolean that just is a flag to ensure the rocket only launches once we don't want to try and add you know the the constant force uh, multiple times and then we check to see if all parts have been added to the rocket so here um, we're declaring uh, an actual private boolean uh, I guess it's a boolean function um, and it iterates through each of that array that we set each of those rocket parts in that array and it checks to see if the snap object script has a boolean of is snapped and it checks to see if it's setting that to this boolean value here and then it checks to see if that is set to false and if any one of the three boolean values is false then this boolean returns false as well but if they all return true then it can return true and then in the update function the rocket can launch so we're checking to see is this boolean value returning true and is launched set to false and then we just add that component for constant force set the new uh, vector 3 and then set the launched variable to true and there it goes so um, that's all I've got uh, this could obviously be changed a little bit or improved so that um, the rocket is kind of a, an unnecessary piece of the equation but I just did it because I wanted to to make something happen when all three were snapped into place um, so you don't some of the the variables in here obviously you don't need to make just the snap zone work and then you could add some extra logic to make it so you can uh, retrieve after the objects have been snapped in place you can also retrieve them and pick them up um, and I think that could be done just with an if statement um, to check to see if you've grabbed it again and then if you have then it sets it you know it sort of releases the object from from the snap zone so yeah uh, that's all I got thanks for watching please comment below I would love to learn if I can improve on this in any way so um, any feedback is super welcome and thank you guys for watching